mother, very uh, meager uh, economic means. Uh, his stepfather was able to buy a house for $8,000. So you can imagine a small house for, I think he had two brothers and a sister. So, you know, he did not come from great wealth. And his life was led dealing with the same problems we're all dealing with, or, or most people deal with, of, you know, go to school, get a job, support yourself, find a girl, get married, support your family. He was dealing with all those issues. The only thing that made Jack different is he did have an awakening of a higher calling. And that higher calling is really the essence of the Gold Motorcycle Gang. When he was in graduate school, he was asked the question, along with the other members of his class, to think back to the first moment when he decided he wanted to be a teacher. And in his particular case, he had this vision of being a spirit being on a gold motorcycle gang with other pals, riding carefree through the universe and looking down and seeing a little blue planet in distress and saying, guys, I know that planet. It's a pretty cool place. Um, it seems to be in trouble. You know, let's go and see if we can help out. And, you know, the analogy would be, you know, some motorcyclists driving on a country road and seeing a car wreck and seeing if they could help the passenger. And so Jack and his buddies decided to incarnate. And of course, the moment they incarnated, they forgot who they were and had to go through the entire human experience to reconnect. And it's only when Jack was in his 40s after having the great success of the Chicken Soup for the Soul books that he really was able to position himself so that he had access to the types of resources and people that he could make a significant difference. And the book evolves and provides some background on what that looks like for Jack. But more importantly, it's really about how Jack represents any ordinary person. He had vision, he had persistence, he had goals, and anyone can achieve their goals if they follow the basic principles of success that govern the universe. And those basic principles, interestingly, turn out to be number one, to have gratitude for what you have, and number two, to focus on helping others. And if you have both of those elements in your being, you're likely to be able to solve the challenges that present themselves to you, whether it's paying your mortgage, finding the right work, finding the right person to, to spend your life with. But there are universal principles that do work, and the Gold Motorcycle Gang fortunately presents a lot of them. Yeah, you know something, Bill? I'm, I'm just sitting here watching you, you know? And I, I think it's really important that just normal, everyday, real people get out here and do things like this because we come from a society, especially in America, where we are so bombarded by advertisements and we need to be famous and wear the right designer clothes and. We need to be the guy up on the stage, the author of the book, the movie star, the rock star. But this is the first time that I've sensed a movement to where we're all equal participants because we're all coming at it from an essential spiritual level. And on that level, we, we let our egos go away. And if they don't, it really shows up in a um, distasteful way and it's picked out almost immediately by people in, within the movement. So it's sort of, we keep ourselves in check like that. And I, I think it's important as we go along because we need everybody. We need the people. You know, there, there's so many spiritual people that I know that have alienated themselves simply because they, they, they want to be at the top of the game. They want to be the center of focus. They want to be uh, the star of the show and, and they don't want to look at some of the things that are going wrong what I'd really like to uh, get from you is how do you look at the world's problems without getting too down you know like there's a saying that comes out of the Middle East to believe in Allah but tie up your camel first you know we, we all need to believe and have faith and have hope like I feel the hope arising in myself, but how do I balance that out with the conflict in the Middle East, the potential of an atomic war, all of these things that come into our, to our life? How do you balance that out well, within yourself? Well, first, let me acknowledge that that's a very good question and that there's no easy answer. I think that each individual has to find their own answer to that because we are living in a world in crisis. We are living in a world full of injustice. We are living in a world full of corruption. 
full of media manipulation, full of you know many many things that you know if you spend too much time focusing on it will fill you with despair. Number one, you have to go back and start with yourself. You you the only thing you can really control is yourself and your own thoughts. It starts with that. So you know one of the things that we do recommend is whether it's walking in nature or meditating, but you go and you find that place within where you can tap the source, where you can tap into the universal consciousness that is actually benign and real. And you know we made a movie tapping the source that was all about this. And you know somebody may disagree. They say no, I think the universe is random and evil. Well, you may choose to believe that. But I don't think you actually have any evidence to support that. Where we do have scientific evidence that supports that there's actually positive directionality. But in any event, you need to find a way to go within first to block out all the noise. Doesn't mean you're going to ignore forever the problems around you, but you do need to find a safe place so that you can build within your own connection. Second, once you've done that, you need to start discovering what gives you your personal joy. In your own life, and it can be something as simple as caring for your child, cooking a good meal, being with friends. It doesn't have to be anything dramatic, but you need to find that, and you need to cultivate that. You need to connect to that source of joy, if possible, on a daily basis. Once you have those two elements, now you can start taking on the problems of the world. You need to be self-sufficient. You need to find meaningful work that gives you joy, that supports your family, that supports you. Not just supports you financially, but supports you emotionally, mentally. That makes you excited to wake up every morning. Once you have that, then you need to connect with others who share this vision of being more than just physical bodies. Who share this vision that life is truly eternal, and that what we do here now is going to have an impact for generations to come. This is, in fact, reality, and it doesn't matter what your religious background is. All major religions have honored this concept. The differences, of course, are that many religions have gotten off track and become more interested in their own power base and the number of people that think exactly like them, rather than going back to the universal principles of love, which really do govern evolution. And the nature of life, and one of the reasons we wrote the Gold Motorcycle Gang was to show that one person can make a difference, and one person who did not come into this world with a lot of the so-called advantages. In the appendices to our novel, and when we first turned the novel in, they said, "The Gold Motorcycle Gang. This is a novel. I've never seen a novel with eight appendices. What is this all about?" We said, "Well, this isn't just a novel. This is a call to action. We want people to connect to the Pachamama Alliance. We want people to connect to push for peace. We want people to connect." To organizations that can help them, whether it be the Omega Institute or uh, you know the Jane Wilhite PSI, we have 200 organizations all together listed, and we want people to know that they're not alone. That there's other people, millions of people, who feel and believe that they can make a difference. And of course, if all these people start connecting and working together, we're going to accelerate the movement towards positive change.、It、doesn't mean that overnight we're going to end. You know the atrocities that are still going on around us, but we have to start somewhere. And so we're saying, start with yourself and start right now. Yeah, I, I I do see some real manifestations of this connectivity. This is one right here, the internet. This is an outer manifestation of spiritual connections, and, and I think it's going to really propel us into help propel us into a new consciousness, and because this is created. From our own consciousness, this is a manifestation of spirit in this this crazy, crazy world that we live in. So, you know, I, I was looking at the、uh, website Birth 2012, and, and that's that's an interesting concept too. Just getting people to focus on a a time, and, and it. I'm sure that December 21st and 22nd are in 2012 are important times. But more than that, it's just a focus point that we can focus on,、uh, like、uh, Valentine's Day. It's a it's a random date, really, but it's a date that we can all pick to put、uh, importance into our relationships and our feelings, and it makes a difference in people's lives. Absolutely, I absolutely agree with you. I would disagree with you a little bit in that I don't find it a random date. It sort of is, and it isn't a random date. But、I'll, let's just. For purposes of right now, say that it is a random date. 
it doesn't matter if it's a random date because if we choose collectively to make it a date of significance,